My name is Estelle Sifo. I'm a machine learning engineer at Neo4j. Uh, I actually started only a few weeks or a few months ago, but I've been working with graphs for much more time and uh, working with LLM for maybe a little less. Uh, I can say it, I've been working with LLM for 10 years. <laughs> um, so the agenda for today, uh, I will uh, explain the motivations and the objectives that we had when we started the project. Uh, I will uh, describe a little bit the RAGAS framework, which is the one that we are mainly using for this evaluation. Uh, I will dig a bit deeper into uh, the techniques that uh, we use that are based on Neo4j to uh, perform the retrieval. Uh, I will try and show a bit of code uh, with uh, a demo and finally um, some insights about uh, the analysis that we have performed and the conclusion that we have so far uh, based on uh, our data sets. So just a, a small poll before we get started. Uh, who has never heard about RAG before? Okay, just a few. And uh, is graph rag something you are familiar with and you think you have already used whatever definition you give to graph rag? No? Okay, cool. Um, so, motivations. So, the basic way to interact with uh, LLM is basically you have a text, you provide it to the model, and the model outputs some text. So that's the very basis. Uh, so why are we trying to make things more complicated than that? Uh, because when you start to have some RAG uh, pipeline, you start having this kind of architecture where you have some intermediate step between the user question and your LLM. You have some uh, retriever whose goal is actually to provide the LLM with a grounding context that you uh, pass in inside the prompt. And uh, the goal is to overcome some of the LLM limitations. Uh, for instance, the fact that they were tr only trained up to uh, a certain time. So if you are asking for information about newest uh, events, for instance, it won't be able to answer out of the box. You also have uh, this issue when you are chatting with some enterprise or some private data that the LLM can see. And it's also helpful to mitigate some uh, the, the, the hallucination issue or LLMs. So this is an example of how it looks like uh, without RAG and with RAG. So this is an HAA um, market specialist or assistant and it asks about which product can you recommend for a user who bought, uh, I don't know, some other products. And without drag, so the LLM doesn't know anything about the, the company's catalog, so it basically answers very generic uh, stuff, like more about how you will find those products. And when you enhance your LLM with RAG, it's actually connected to your database, so it can actually recommend a real products that are in your catalog. You can uh, imagine having links over there for the user to click and uh, uh, buy products that are interesting for, uh, for him. So in a, in a RAG pipeline, we have those basically two steps. One is the retriever. Uh, where you have to define a strategy about how to find the relevant context for the uh, user question. And the second part is the generation, which is, okay, you give the context to this LLM and the, the LLM generates the, um, the text, the, the human readable answer. And the part that we uh, often forget about is the evaluation part. So how do you know that the answer that you're providing is actually relevant to the question and it's actually uh, true based on uh, the context? So this is mostly what we will um, uh, talk about today. 
So the challenges of building this uh, evaluation pipeline is that it's quite a new uh, topic, so there is no standard process yet. Uh, it's relatively time consuming, especially if you want to have some ground truth, you want to compare the LLM generated answer with. And there are also some questions about how do you perform this evaluation? Are you evaluating the retrieval results, the generation part, or the overall process, like the final answer based on the initial user question? So here uh, we are listing a few tools that we have explored. So it's definitely not an exhaustive list. It's probably not up to date uh, since we started the project. Uh, probably more, much more tools uh, have uh, been created. And uh, in the end, we choose to use uh, Ragas, which has a few advantages, which are that, that it requires a very, very minimal human intervention, almost no human intervention for evaluation, with the drawback that it relies on LLMs, so there are many questions arising um, because of that. But still, it gives us some uh, ideas about how your, uh, your, your uh, pipeline is performing. So Ragas, uh, basically, so it's open source, uh, so great. Uh, it starts to have some users and some uh, yeah, people using it and contributing to it, so it's great. So it's LLM-based uh, metrics for evaluation. So to give you an idea about how this works, uh, the, 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 it, the, the framework will use LLM to, for instance, extract some facts from the question, or no, from the, um, the answer, sorry, and cross-check that, for instance, the facts that have been generated can be inferred from the context that you provided. So when I say facts, for instance, imagine if I tell you uh, Michael Jordan was an American basketball player born in 1963. Uh, this would be the generated answer, and it contains three facts, like Michael Jordan is from the US, he was a basketball player, and he was born in 1963. Then you can cross-check that, okay, are those three information correct or not based on what? the context is uh, saying. Uh, so, okay, so Ragas contains uh, quite a few metrics. Uh, there are some metrics related to, 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 whose goal is to measure how good is the retrieval. So you have your question and you retrieve some context. Is the context, the, the, the items that you retrieve in your context, are those relevant to the user questions? So you have the, 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 the concept of context precision and recall, so to measure if the relevant items are there and if all the relevant items are there, basically. Oops. And then you also have metrics uh, used to measure how good the generation part is. So one of them is uh, faithfulness, which is basically uh, you compare the user question uh, to the ground truth. And uh, the last one, or the second one here, is the answer relevancy, which means, okay, maybe your answer is actually right if you compare it to the context, but that's not what is interesting. The interesting thing is how good is the answer based on the user question. So that's the uh, role of the answer relevancy metric. Okay, so before going to demo, uh, let me explain a little bit um, some Neo4j backed uh, RAG pipeline. So we come up with this nomenclature here where we uh, split the retrieval strategy into two main categories. One is vector RAG. So in vector RAG, you have your user question, which is a text. You embed it and you compare it to some vector index uh, where you embedded some, we ha you have already embedded some text uh, in your database. For instance, uh, you have a database with movies. Movies have some summary. You embed all the summaries 
uh, you put that into a vector index, and then when a user is asking, like, find a movie uh, who's taking place on the moon, you can compare those two texts and do some semantic search. So that is vector rag, and that includes all the variations of that, uh, chunking documents, uh, section, uh, whatever. And then we have what we have called graph rag. So this is everything that kind of enhance this uh, context with um, more context based on your, on your data. So the, the simplest strategy you can implement with uh, a graph database is what we call augmented vector search, which means that you actually start from doing this uh, semantic search. You find your movies, for instance, and then you can traverse the graph and uh, find the surroundings nodes. I will give you uh, some example uh, very shortly. And then you, we have this uh, text to cipher retriever, which is something totally different, where we do not need semantic search anymore. We just convert the user question to a query to fetch from the graph exactly the information that we need. So let me give you some examples. So this is the very simple uh, vector rag that you can do uh, with Neo4j. So uh, as we said, we have this retrie vector retriever that is embedding the user query and comparing it to some vectors stored into the Neo4j vector index. So basically what it means is uh, if you have a question about find some uh, move, find the, I think the question was find the actors acting in a uh, movie, acting like astronauts in some movies. Uh, if you ask this question, this is what you will get in the context for a uh, pure vector search. So it, the, the, the retriever is only able to retrieve movies. And so it won't be, you can imagine it won't be able to answer the question based on this uh, context because you're asking for actors. So that's where the graph rag can improve uh, the, the context retrieval because you can still start from the semantic search, so the exact same first node here, um, Space Cowboy and Galaxy Quest. But then you traverse your graph and you find the actors which are connected to those movies and then you pass everything into the context, so both the movies and the list of actors. And then uh, the um, the LLM has more information to be able to answer the, 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 the question. The drawback of this technique is that you have to code yourself this uh, traversal query. So for instance here, I've decided to traverse only the relationship named acted in. So that means that if someone is asking for the director of the movie, uh, same problem, we won't be able to find the information inside the context. So last uh, solution that could work is text to cipher. So in that case, there is an intermediate step that also rely on LLM, but you take the question, you provide your graph schema, so the type of nodes, the type of relationship, and you ask the LLM to generate the query that uh, will answer the question for you. And then you basically execute the query and provide the results of that query to another or the same LLM to write, uh, to write the question. So for instance, here we have this question which actors play uh, astronauts. It's converted into uh, this specific cyber, cyber query and then the context only contain the, uh, the actors whose role type was uh, astronaut. Okay, Timo, so. For the demo, uh, I will show you some, uh, basically what we have done and how we are trying to compare uh, those, basically those three strategies. So what we have is that we have a new 4J database here, 
matched with a schema that looks like this. So here the pink nodes are movies and they are connected to uh, actors, uh, directors, and genres. And we also have uh, a few information about users who rated the movies. And this database contains a few indexes. Right, so we have created two indexes in this database. The one we will be interested in is here, so movies plots embedding. So if we look at some uh, movie nodes, um, we have uh, some information, yeah, we have the plot, so a very short description, and we have embedded this, uh, this description into a vector representation. So then we have our knowledge graph here. So it contains approximately 10,000 movies and maybe 20,000 persons. And what we want to do is to uh, run some uh, rag. So take some questions, generate the context, the answer, and see how good those answers are. So to do that, we have built a data set of questions, uh, also we have generated the ground truth answer. And we try to, def to add to this question a concept of complexity in the sense that we wanted the data set not to be biased to contain only question that will be, that won't be, uh, sorry, to contain question that won't be answerable by vector rag. So, we have this concept of trying to mitigate the complexity and include questions with low complexity, meaning that they will be, they will be answerable with a very simple vector rag and a much more complex question that require aggregation, for instance, which is something that it's very hard to answer with a semantic search. So then we define uh, our configuration. So that this contains all the parameters that we need to run the experiment. So it contains the, the experiment name, the database that is used with the name of the indexes when we want to use it, the name of the data set, and all the, the, all the parameters that are required for the uh, retrieval. So in this case, uh, we will use the text to cipher a retriever, and we need to provide the name of uh, the LLM that we want to use for the text to cipher generation. Uh, we have some uh, exter uh, prompt config, so for instance here I'm explaining to the LLM that uh, there is a vector index named movie plots embedding, so that it can use it in the generated cipher. And then we have some uh, config about uh, the models to be used for the generation and the Raga specific uh, configuration such, such as the model to use as well. So all of this is uh, documented inside uh, a README uh, here actually. Uh, because this configuration depends a lot on which strategy you use and there are some default parameters as well. So I mean you can imagine the complexity. Uh, so uh, let me run everything and, oops, and see. So um, in this notebook, what we are doing is that we are loading basically the configuration uh, file here uh, that yeah, contains all the parameters that we have seen and loading the data sets. And just for the sake of this demo, I'm just limiting the data set to the first two items so that we are not uh, spending hours on this uh, notebook. Then we can connect to the Neo4j database you have just seen and retrieve uh, the context. So if we go through the, well, let's do it like this, uh, the retrieve context, 
Uh, you can see here we have the question. So can you tell me a movie about uh, a movie with Tom Hanks from 1994? And you can see the generated cipher query is here. So basically it's uh, searching for an actor with name Tom Hanks and uh, following the relationship acting in uh, down to the movie uh, that was released in 1994. And so this is the information that we pass into the context. So the only movie that was found in the database that actually matches the uh, constraints is uh, Forest Camp. Uh, then we have another question, uh, just uh, as another example. So what is the movie where toys are talking? So this is much less precise as a question, but let's see how uh, text to cipher uh, performs. So what it does here, it's uh, encoding the question and uh, basically uh, comparing this, uh, this vector here to uh, the vector index called movie plots embedding and returning only the first match. So that's what the LLM uh, has found to be the best query to answer the question. And the movie title that was found is called Toys. So I discovered when preparing this, toy, this talk that there is actually a movie called Toys. <laughs> okay, so now we have our context and we can generate the answer. So uh, here we are calling uh, the LLM by providing the user question, the context, and asking it, okay, now generate uh, the answers. And uh, here are uh, the, uh, again the question and the answer. So for the first one, a movie with Tom Hanks uh, from 1994, uh, it says, okay, based on what you told me, uh, the movie is Forrest Gump, so great. And what is the movie where toys are talking? Again, based on the context, we only provided one movie in the end in the context, so based on that, that's the only possible uh, answer. Okay, now, uh, are these answers right? So that's, um, that's where Ragas uh, enters uh, into play. And we are actually running the evaluation on these questions based on the ground truth that we have defined. And the good thing is that Ragas will provide some aggregated metrics, so the overall performance of your, of your model, of your pipeline. And you can also see in the data frame uh, the result per question. So this is super useful. Uh, yeah, so all the scores are uh, here. So yeah, super useful to find uh, where your model is performing good and where it is not, so that you can try and improve. Uh, for instance, here we are talking about text to cipher, so this is super valuable information for us to spot, okay, for this kind of question, the model is able to generate uh, the proper cipher query, and for this question, it is not. So we will use this information for uh, fine tuning and find the, the data, uh, make sure that the data set that we use for fine tuning contain, uh, contains some, um, both of the, of the questions. So finally, we can save the results. Uh, well, that's not uh, super uh, uh, new. And what I'm going to show you now, so we talked about that, is uh, a few results. So uh, results. Um, basically, we have tried, uh, so the uh, three strategies you, we uh, described at the beginning, so simple vector rag, Augmented vector rag, so with some graph traversal and text to cipher. So this plot is showing the different metrics for each of these strategies. So the vector search is the green uh, bar, so the last bar of uh, each group. Uh, text to cipher is in the middle, uh, the orange bar, and the augmented vector search is the um, blue bar, the, the first one. And what we can see here is that for most of the metrics, uh, the graph rag strategies, so either orange or uh, blue, are performing definitely better than uh, the, the, the pure vector search. 
So what we are trying to see here is really the relative comparison of those uh, two strategies. So those are for the um, context-related metrics. And we did the same uh, kind of analysis for the uh, generation-related metrics, just to get some ideas about how the, uh, the pipeline is performing overall. And we have uh, the, the same uh, conclusion, which is for this use case, where we have uh, a, an, an existing knowledge graph with um, some text properties that are embedded we are able to achieve better uh, results uh, when we use uh, graph rack, so um, when we do not focus only on the node that contains the, the text, but when we look uh, a, a bit uh, around, that, uh, around that node. We also did the same kind of experiment with a product uh, data set, so this is the H&M uh, example I showed you earlier, where we have a data set with uh, the, the catalog of this, um, uh, of this uh, company, basically, and uh, information about the different variants of the product and information about uh, customers who bought the, the, the product. So we are also achieving quite a good result with uh, text to search cipher, especially for all the context-related uh, metrics. So a few uh, examples of questions where uh, we are performing quite well. Uh, so here the question is, what are the germs of uh, underneath? And you can see that uh, the only actually uh, um, strategy that was able to answer the question probably is text to cipher. Um, even augmented vector search was not able to answer the question probably because the uh, journal was not something that was included in the retrieval query, which is something that we need to configure for basically all the questions. So probably the developer thought about uh, adding the actors and the directors, but maybe not about traversing the uh, relationship towards uh, the journals. And here is another example um, um, where we need some kind of uh, aggregation, which um, again, uh, text to cipher is able to perform uh, pretty well because uh, the LLM uh, output the, um, the proper query. Uh, but uh, the, so the vector search only is definitely not able to answer. And in the augmented vector search, we have uh, part of the answer, but it's based only on the context, which is, of course, limited and doesn't contain all the database. So based on the context, it's true, but overall, uh, it's uh, definitely not the right uh, answer. So overall, uh, this is what uh, we, uh, we found. So we, on the examples, again, on the data set that we have uh, analyzed, uh, graph rack strategies, uh, outperform the vector rack strategies. Uh, text to cipher is also uh, pretty good at uh, questions where we need uh, quite lo um, larger or longer uh, graph traversals and also everything related to uh, aggregations. Um, yep. So conclusions. Um, so, uh, during this work, uh, so we have built uh, the tools uh, to uh, evaluate different uh, RAG pipelines. So, in our case, using Neo4j, but actually we have different retrievers you can imagine uh, using any tool. We have compared uh, different strategies, so simple vector RAG strategies and graph RAG and uh, exploring uh, different strat uh, strategies and uh, come up with uh, some pre preliminary results. So yeah, I have to say this is still work ongoing. We ha still have a lot of things on our to-do list. This is just a few items. Uh, one thing to mention is that, uh, so the code you've seen is not yet uh, open source. We are working on this and we yeah, are trying to define the roadmap in order to be able to open source it. But uh, we have this uh, Neo4j 
GenAI uh, package, sorry, uh, that has been open source a few weeks ago, so it's in beta mode, but it contains different tools for people who want to use uh, LLM uh, with Neo4j. So the retrievers uh, we talk about, like the um, text to cipher retriever are already implemented in that package, and you uh, are totally uh, uh, free to, to, to use it and give us some, some feedback. So yeah, I think that's, that's it for me. Uh, maybe we have some minutes for questions. Thank you for this uh, interesting uh, presentation. My question is, uh, which uh, LLM have you used for computing uh, the uh, RAGAS metrics? And if you have uh, uh, tested different um, LLMs, uh, are the, uh, the result, uh, were they the same or uh, were, were they uh, different? Thank you. Yeah, thank you for the question. Uh, so at the moment, the results that you have seen have been generating using GPT-4.0, um, but definitely uh, the exploring other LLM is also part of our to-do list. It's maybe not here, but uh, yeah, this is the a, st uh, a work in progress. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So uh, thank you for your presentation and. Um, if I understand correctly, when you use text to cipher and the augmented uh, retrieval, uh, so you're using an LLM to, um, to translate the query into uh, a cipher query. And how do you evaluate this LLM? And does it hallu hallucinate sometimes? Thank you. So yeah, for the, or so for the augmented vector search, the query is not generated by LLM. It's something hard-coded by the developer, let's say. But yeah, for text to cipher, we are um, um, generating the, so the cipher query with the LLM. Um, at the moment, we consider that, I mean, if the query is valid, I mean, if it can be executed, we just take the results and that's it. Uh, but we are starting the process of fine tuning uh, as well LLMs for this specific task, so translating a question to a cipher query, and then we will have a better uh, idea about how good this uh, we are performing in the in this uh, in this step. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I wonder in your use case the uh, database is for films, right? I wonder for other use cases like very. Uh, domain specific knowledge, how do you build the database for a very structured database like the knowledge graph? So you mean starting from unstructured text or from? Okay, so yeah, if we have some unstructured text uh, like documents, at the moment there are some techniques, I mean it's not something new like name entity extraction, relation extraction from which you can build the knowledge graph and you can um, yeah, have this knowledge graph and use it in this kind of pipeline. Maybe you know you have your documents node that you can store in your graph. You index the text the same way you will do with uh, vector uh, search. And then in your traversal query, you can go to the entities and maybe find other related document that you wouldn't have found uh, with, um, uh, without the, the graph structure. But yeah, so there are some techniques, uh, name entity recognition, relation extraction. There are even techniques that are using LLMs for that, for uh, find, uh, finding ent uh, entities in, inside the, the text. Thank you for your talk. And do you design manually the relationships for the graph? Uh, like Ectodin, it's manually designed? Yes? Uh, the relationships in the graph, are they designed manually, like by programmers, or automatically somehow extracted? Uh, so the graph schema is built uh, manually. And if yes, uh, then what maybe are guidelines to design such relationships in the graph uh, for maybe some bigger data sets like knowledge database for offer company? 
that's a very good question. Uh, I would say the way you build the knowledge drive schema totally depends on the application. You can have the exact same data set, like CSV data set, and two completely different graph schema depending on what you want to do with, uh, with that. Um, yeah, so what, what are the rules? Um, I don't know if there are some rules. Uh, it's all about uh, performances. You know that, for instance, if you have a node with uh, thousands of relationships with the same type attached to it, it won't be performance. Because the, the, it, every time you, you, you will have a query that starts from that node and traverse, will traverse the relationship, it will have to traverse thousands of relationships. So maybe there is no other option, but sometimes you can just split the relationship and for instance, uh, add, append the, the year at the end, for instance, uh, or something that will help you and reduce the amount of uh, relationship to traverse from one single node. So, yeah, I mean, uh, it's hard to, an to answer the question, uh, generally speaking. So it all really depends on, the, on the, the, um, the use case and how you will traverse the graph. I haven't tried to ask LLM to generate the schema for me yet, but maybe. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Thanks so much for uh, the great talk. We appreciate it. Um, Question I have about the uh, evaluation data set that you used. Uh, it seems like it's a fixed data set that you have to be manually. Um, do you have any recommendations on how you could potentially automate the generation of such a, a, an evaluation data set? Because if your data evolves at some point, the evaluation data set dis gets disconnected. It's not could get in invalid, and um, you know those kinds of things. Yeah, so we have the exact use case for text to cipher. Uh, the idea is, in a, I mean, if you are able to collect some data set to start building the tool and uh, move that into production, then we have this, uh, what we call this feedback mechanism. So every time the user is asking a question and is actually provided with a query, we are asking, okay, are you happy with the query or not? Which if it if he's happy with the query, this is something that we can reuse to um, to improve. And if it's if, if he's not, of for, of course we cannot include the query as it is. The mechanism on how to deal with this is still unclear, uh, but for sure this is uh, one way we can uh, improve uh, the, the the pipeline as it's running. Okay, let me pick on that one. The last one you said. Uh, happiness and accuracy are two different things, right? I mean, how do you evaluate the second one, which is, I think, in some cases with RAG, more important, accuracy versus happiness? Thank you. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> there are definitely RAG happiness versus, um, yeah. So that's why uh, in the data set that we have, we have the ground truth, which is uh, ways to compare exactly what is in the final answer compared to what is in the in the in the LLM generated answer, yeah. Uh, thank you for the comprehensive presentation. Uh, so just on the text to cipher. Uh, so if I have the data in a relational SQL database, and and there are also tools that convert, like LLMs convert, yeah, text to SQL. So does the graph database? Uh, perform better, or can I replace graph with a SQL database, and uh, what are your views on that? Yeah, well, if you take uh, the foundation models, they are performing better on text to SQL, probably because they have seen much more SQL than Cypher in their training, uh, for sure. Uh, then, uh, if you fine tune the model, um, I think we can uh, achieve similar performances, to be honest. I do not have the exact numbers in mind, but uh, I mean, SQL is structured, uh, so I do not see why uh, the LLM wouldn't understand it and manage to, to output the proper query. Thank you. Okay, well, no more questions. Okay, then thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs>